welcome to today's video. This is so fun. Someone actually gave me this idea a few months ago and it was kind of like a spark of an idea. They said to incorporate Spotify, somehow choosing my reads. And I was thinking for this long, up until right now, how I could do this. How can Spotify choose the books that I read? As you guys know, when I am reading books, I have to have music on. I have to have that kind of like background scenery to the books. And I always get questions on what I'm listening to, if it has lyrics and stuff. And when I am reading my books and I finding a playlist for the book, I usually just search up the book. And if the book doesn't have a playlist already made for it, I'll just search up like the vibe of the book. If it's a fantasy, I'll search up like fantasy music or fantasy soundtrack, dark fantasy vibes. And I'll just find a playlist that's already curated. And I personally listen to music while reading that has lyrics in it. Like it doesn't really bother me. I don't get distracted. I actually really like it. So it just gives like the perfect background when you have like the perfect song in the perfect scene in the perfect book. It really just makes it so much better. It takes it to the next level. Like if I'm reading a romance and it's like a scene that I've been waiting for and I have just like that perfect Taylor Swift song in the background, like it just makes it that much better. On Spotify, they have playlists that they create for you daily. I think it's different every day. I'm not like 100% sure, but we're going to go through the playlist that they make for me and I am going to pick one that I think could correlate with one of the books on my TBR and we're going to listen to that playlist while I read the specific book and we'll see if it makes sense, if it made my experience with the book better. Before we get into the playlist that Spotify has made for me, I want to thank today's sponsor, which is Bloom. If you haven't heard of Bloom, they sell a greens powder, which is the ultimate daily gut health supplement. I've been drinking my Bloom greens for months and months and months now. My favorite flavor is a citrus flavor. I put some ice in it and I usually drink it in the morning before I like eat anything and it's been helping me and it honestly is so good because I don't get enough fruits and veggies and stuff and that's kind of incorporated into the greens powder made with over 30 plus organic fruits and veggies probiotics antioxidants and more it helps balance gut health clear skin boost energy help in digestion there's so many benefits to this so I highly highly recommend if you have not tried blooms green especially if you want to help gut health or anything like that you need more nutrients in your diet the link will be in the description if you are interested now let's see the playlist that Spotify has curated for me today if you go to just the search bar on Spotify you can see all all of the different categories they have and if you click made for you that is obviously all of the playlists and all the different songs and artists they think you will enjoy in this like playlist so going through them i think we're gonna go through the mixes that they make because on the top they have little extra ones they have one that's made for us like they made one for me and lauren and stuff like that but if you go down there's genre mixes artist mixes decade mixes mood mixes niche mixes and then daily mixes like there's a bunch just to go through what they've made for me on genres there's pop country indie folk acoustic rock classical and for example if i went into the classical music one i feel like reading a Bridgerton book or a book of that sort of genre and type, this would be the perfect playlist to listen to that. Or if I went down and I went to the decade mixes and I found a 90s playlist, I would try to find a book that correlates to that decade, the style of music, and it just makes the vibe of the book that much better. So I think I'm going to go through these playlists and pick one that I think is the vibe for the book that I'm thinking of. I want to read a fantasy book, so I'll stick with that. I don't know exactly what fantasy. We'll look at my TBR. Let's find a couple playlists that make sense while reading a fantasy. So just looking at these, I feel like Moody Mix maybe. I feel like this has The Neighborhood, Taylor Swift, Harry Styles, Five Seconds Summer, Gracie Abrams, Adele, Phoebe Bridgers, Lord, Lana Del Rey. Like it has a good mix of songs that I feel like could correlate to a fantasy vibe. I don't know why moody mood makes sense for me. Then we have down here Korean R&B, Peaceful Shower, Homework. These are like my niche ones. Late Night Music, Dark Moody, Dream Pop, Friday, Walking, Dark Sad. Let's see. Dark Moody. I feel like that could give fantasy. Ooh yeah. This has Chase Atlantic, The Neighborhood, which I feel like are artists that definitely come with fantasy books. It has Arctic Monkeys, Florence and the Machine. Like, those are definitely artists you see in fantasy playlists. It depends what type of fantasy we're doing. Like, dark fantasy, obviously, I would probably pick maybe the dark moody. But the indie ones, like, it has, like, different artists that I feel like could vibe with fantasies. So, I want to try to do different genres in this video so we can do different types of playlists. Like, we have a country mix. If I was reading, say, for Chestnut Spring series, I would definitely pick that one. But let's see the fantasies I have, and then we'll try to correlate it with a playlist. Okay, so these are the fantasies that I think I want to choose from. I have other ones on my TBR, but these ones are like higher up on the list. So I have Ride a Queen, which I really want to read, but I don't feel in the mood for a fantasy like that. We have These Violent Delights, which I think is a Romeo and Juliet retelling. I just bought this one. It's a new release. It's called A Study in Drowning by Ava Reed. And I think it's kind of giving almost like, not exactly Divine Rivals, but it's kind of like a rivals and there's like books involved and an author and kind of like a spooky house. Not a spooky house, but I think the characters go to an author that she loves house and he passed away. So it's kind of giving like spooky vibes, which I think is perfect for the season and low-key. Ninth House by Lee Bardugo, which is like a dark academia fantasy. Here's our options. I think I'm between these two, but I'm like kind of leaning towards this because it's a new release and I haven't seen too much on it. Let's do this. Let's see what it's about and then we'll pick one of the playlists that I feel like could go with this and we'll listen to that while we're reading it. It says, Effie's always believed in fairy tales. Since childhood, she's been haunted by visions of the fairy king. She's found solace in the pages of this author's beloved epic about a mortal girl who falls in love with the fairy king and then destroys him. There's an announcement for a contest to redesign the late author's estate and she feels 
certain this is her destiny. She arrives and someone else is already there who's Preston, which I think is like the love interest if this is like a romance fantasy. He's a young literature scholar. It's two rival students investigating the author's legacy, piecing together clues through his letters, books, and diaries, and they discover the house's foundation isn't the only thing that can't be trusted. That like sounds really good. It's giving like spooky vibes, but also like not too much of like a dark fantasy. I feel like because of the rivals to lovers. So I think I'm gonna choose Moody Mix for this one because some of the songs in here, Ghost of You, Two Ghosts. I don't know. Now I'm like really holding on to dead author's house that they're going to. But I feel like this song is giving. The vibes are there. I feel like the vibes are there with the songs that are in here. We'll see if this the playlist makes sense. But that's like the whole point of this video. We're just gonna find playlists like I usually do. But usually I'll type in the book and find playlists. But we're doing the ones obviously that Spotify made for me. And we're gonna try to make these go together. So I'm gonna listen to this playlist. I'm gonna read this book. We'll see if they make sense together. If it just enhances the vibe of this book. And also if this book is good. If I like it. Obviously all my thoughts and ratings at the end of it. Moody Mix. A Study in Drowning. I will come back with updates and opinions and yeah I'm really excited okay let's go start this Guys, Chris says hi. He doesn't want to be on camera today. But he's sitting here while I've been reading this book for a little bit. You gonna watch me? Mm. Okay. I've gotten like 140 pages in and I want to get halfway before I stop reading until later tonight. And that's like 180 pages. Honestly, shorter. And I've been reading a lot of books that are like 500. Why are you looking at me like that? I've been reading a lot of books that are like 500 pages or over. Like all the books I've read this month are pretty long. So this feels like a really short book. It's like 370 pages, which I feel like is normal. I thought it was gonna be like a fairy, not a fairy tale, a fantasy like Divine Rivals where it's, it's almost modern day or like historical. Romantic kind of, I don't know, but it's kind of giving me like River Enchanted by Rebecca Ross. And that one was kind of like a folk fantasy and this one's kind of giving that where there's like this old folk tale like story that the author wrote and like I don't know I can't really understand the, like the history of where she lives there's like two sides to it and they don't get along and it's really interesting but she went to the author's house like the description said she like idolized this author because I think he was like the best of the part where she's from and the guy that's at the house that's also there he like has suspicions about the author and it's like they're kind of feuding over that but she said she'll help him she also is there because she goes to architecture like part of school like that's the university she has for architecture and she wanted to be in literature but they don't let women go to the literature so she like wasn't allowed to so she's in like the second best which is architecture and literature is the best but the guy who's at the house the author's house he's at the literature college that's where she wanted to be it's very interesting but like part of the story is that women aren't as good or like can't be as high up as the men there so i don't know i don't really like the main character that much i don't know i don't know what it is about her she's very like i don't have any adjectives unrelatable Unrelatable. Yeah, I guess she's not really relatable. Snobby? No, she's not snobby. I just don't really like being in her point of view. I like the, the guy though. I feel like he kind of saves the story. Or I feel like he's gonna save the story a little bit. I don't really love her. But there's stuff about her past that I'm waiting to find out because she's very like squirmish. Is that the word? Maybe that's the word. I don't know. There's also like weird stuff going on with this house. Like she thought it was gonna be this beautiful huge place that the author lived and it's this like worn down like gross place. So I'm not really enjoying it that much because I don't really like the folk fantasy type vibes but it's not like that bad. It's good. It's just not what I expected. I expected it to be a little bit different but yeah. I'm trying to get halfway and then I'll read some more and I'll see if it gets better maybe. I don't know. I'll let you guys know. That's all I have to say. Do you have anything to say? Nothing? Nothing. I think it's like a 3 out of 5 right now. You maybe think? even less. You think? Like a 2 out of 5 maybe. Damn. Yeah, I don't- I can't see myself giving this like a 4. Me neither. Yeah. Like a 3 max. Lucky to get a 3 and a half. That'd be crazy. <laughs> okay, I'll be back.
guys, it is now the next day. I don't really have like that many thoughts. Also, ignore the fact, I actually don't know if you can even tell. I got anxious last night and picked off all of my lashes. I had lash extensions, so I have like no lashes left. I don't know if you can tell at all. But if you're wondering why I look a little different, if if you can tell, I did pick them all. <laughs> that is not the point of this video, but I did finish a study in drowning a little bit ago. I think I'm gonna give this three stars. I was on leaning towards a two star because I just really wasn't enjoying it, but I think the second half picked up and I think the ending was very interesting and I liked the way that it ended. I had no idea where the story was going and honestly, I was confused majority of the book. I just think the writing wasn't for me and it's kind of like, I would say like a dark folk fantasy. It's kind of a mix between like the dark, I keep saying dark, but like dark spookiness, but it kind of almost reads as if it's like a historical type of one. Like they, I don't know how to explain this, but it's definitely more of a folk story. I just don't think the writing was for me. I don't think the storyline was really for me either, but again, the end of it was pretty good. And if you're into like folk dark fantasy like that, it's also YA. So it's like a pretty easy read. Like it's very fast paced, like reading it, it like goes pretty quick. I finished this pretty quick. So if you're into that, I think you would definitely enjoy this, but it just, for me personally, it's not the type of fantasy I like. And I feel like I had different expectations for it. But the one thing I wish it had was a map in the front of it. And I usually never really pay attention to the maps or like go back to look at the maps, but I was so confused on like the different territories and everything when they were talking about like the history of like towns or cities or whatever so I just couldn't picture it and I couldn't understand it so I wish there was a map where I could like visually see like what's going on like I wish there was more detail of like what was happening with the author and like all of that like I feel like it just like kind of went through what they were doing the two main characters but then it was like things were happening but we didn't know why do you know what I mean I don't know it's not my favorite read just one that's just not for me so yeah I think three stars it was just it was okay and the main character kind of grew on me a little bit more I did end up like kind of seeing where she was coming from and enjoying it a little bit more but the main guy character his name is Preston I really enjoyed him and his character everything else was just a little bit like confusing to me but it wasn't bad again three stars so into like the Spotify playlist I was listening while reading this honestly this is like where I feel like playlists and curating playlists for a book is so important like while I was reading this some of the songs that were coming on were like really good for the mood and very like it made sense with the book but then other ones it just didn't make sense to listen to while reading this like I feel like if I listen to the playlist that I listened to for A River Enchanted kind of like folk songs and like eerie vibes like I feel like that would have made this reading experience like a little bit better with the scenery and stuff and the music in the background so this is like really proving that like listening to the right songs for the right books really makes it that much better but I do think that the moody mix that I chose was like the best one out of all of them for this book because some of the songs were kind of giving that like I don't know something about like Ellie Goulding songs for fantasy like really hits and there was like one that was came on I was like okay this is like this makes sense. Playlist was it half of a check. I wouldn't say like a hundred percent was good for this book. I think if I had one that was already curated for the vibe of this, would have been good. It was moody and it was dark and spooky and folk. And I still really like this cover. Like I think this is really cute. Let's choose our next playlist. Let's choose our next book. I kind of am in the mood for dare I say a romance? I haven't read a romance in a while. So let's look at the playlists that they've curated for me. I honestly don't know if it's different every day. I kind of just assumed it was, but we're about to find out if it is. Hi. So the covers of them are different, but I think, oh no, in the genres, there's now a punk mix and a rock mix, but the folk one is still there, country still there. Artists, I feel like they're the same. Oh, there's a Noah Khan one. Love that. I feel like the covers of them kind of changed. Maybe some songs in the playlist changed, but I feel like it's kind of the same. My niche ones. <gasps> Ooh, these ones changed. Okay, soft love song, hopeless romantic, sad love, vampire mix, lonely mix, walking, breakup, alternative, peaceful love. Ooh, okay. Why is this kind of perfect? It's vampire mix. I have the perfect book for this. Oh my god. These were the two books that I wanted to read, like being what playlist I found, and one of them was My Roommate is a Vampire. I think the neighbor that moves in, or she moves into where the neighbor is or something, she finds out he's a vampire. Something like that. I know the main male guy is a vampire, and that would be like really perfect. Like they curated that for me because they knew I wanted to read read this. The other one I really want to read is Dead Romantics because I've read Seven Year Slip and I was obsessed with it so I really want to read another book by her. So let's see a playlist that I could read for this one. The vampire playlist, like the niche mix that they made for this is like actually too perfect to pass up. I feel like romances are the easiest to find a playlist for because usually all the plays they make for me like Harry Styles, Taylor Swift, like all of them, Gracie Abrams are in them so I feel like that's always like perfect vibes for romance books but... <gasps> What do I do? Do I do the vampire one because it's too good to pass up? I feel like it really is too good to pass up. Should we do my romance vampire? I feel like we should. How can I get a vampire playlist and have a vampire romance and I'm in the mood for romance and just not read it? Doesn't make sense. So, okay, let's see what songs are in here. Kind of scrolled through, but Haunted, Young and Beautiful, Favorite Crime, Vampire, I Should Hate You, Teenage Dream, Royals, Teeth. Oh my god, this is like low-key perfect. Okay, I'm gonna start listening to this playlist I feel like if this one doesn't hit with this book something's wrong It's gonna be perfect. I have a feeling and I feel like I'm gonna like this too I'm in the mood for just a fast romance, but I'm also like fall spooky mood I will update you guys as I read. We'll see if it's good. We'll see if the playlist makes sense with it It's got to right. It kind of has to. I'm gonna go start this. I'm really excited
next day. Yesterday was Saturday and I couldn't read a lot. I only read like 20 pages. Just started out the book, but today it's Sunday. It's a perfect rainy, gloomy fall Sunday. It's literally been the best vibes ever. I've been binging this book and I'm now on page 161. I think it's around like 330 pages, something like that. But I have nothing to do today. I literally am just like hanging, chilling at home. It's just, again, such a perfect, perfect day to read, a perfect Sunday to read, a perfect relaxing Sunday. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. I kind of wanna binge the rest of this today because it reads really, really quick. It's really fast paced. It's like no brain power romance type of book, but saying romance feels a little weird because like my thoughts on the book so far, like I said, reads really fast, love the writing of it. Like that's all good. But the storyline, I don't know. It's very interesting because I like the two characters. Like one's obviously a vampire and he's like, when I think of vampires, like the first thing that comes to my head is Damon from Vampire Diaries. I don't know why. It's just the first guy that comes to my head. And anytime I've ever read about vampires or watched vampires, they act very like I don't know the word, but you know, you guys know, like Damon Salvatore, like they act like that. But this guy, this vampire, something is like happened and whatever, and he kind of acts very old fashioned and he acts very respectable and like he's stuck in like the olden times, like years and years ago. That's just how he acts. So whenever he's like talking very formally, it's just so weird to me in my head, I'm picturing Damon, which makes it better, honestly, because if you're reading this book and you don't picture Frederick as Damon, like, I don't know, you just have to do that. So that just obviously makes this reading experience better. But yeah, it's very interesting because the two are obviously not just because he's a vampire, so like opposite she's an artist she's very like bubbly and outgoing and stuff their their personalities are very very different so the two of them together are very very interesting mix i don't know so far it's good but i can't like see this as like a romance like them like getting together romantically like i like their relationship like platonically so far as roommates as friends and like whatever's happening with the storyline like i'm enjoying it but like i can't see them like becoming anything further than that so i'm excited to see how that happens and where it goes from there i just like i don't feel the romance but that's okay because i'm really enjoying the story and i'm enjoying the storyline of it and the two characters and it's fine if i don't feel the romance because i'm really enjoying it anyway usually i'd be like kind of bummed out if i'm not feeling their connection but like honestly i don't care because the story's really fun maybe since i'm like i think around halfway it'll just it'll pick up we will see and i will let you know so i'm gonna go read this i kind of want to finish it today i just want to binge the rest of it that's like kind of my goal for today i have literally nothing to do other than eat dinner like that's literally it so we'll see how it goes wait one more thing before i go and finish this and read more is the playlist i'm listening to with it the vampire mix honestly spotify curated the most perfect playlist to read this book with like it has romance songs pop songs but also has like vampire-y songs like we really hit the mark on this one so thank you spotify for this niche mix i didn't know i needed a vampire playlist in my life until today until i started reading this book i have been listening to it while reading and it's just perfect background music so i'm gonna go go read and go listen and i will be back when i'm done finished my roommate is a vampire honestly this is the perfect fall little bingeable book like if you need a book just to sit and just enjoy on a fall day this is it like it's giving the spooky vibes but it's giving little i guess romance vibes but it's just such a fast-paced book like i just had such a fun time binging this today i will say that the ending wasn't like my favorite way to wrap this up i don't know it was very interesting it kind of took a little bit of a turn not that i wasn't expecting it like i knew something about whatever was happening was gonna happen but it was just like so I don't know but again i don't really think i connected to like the romance part of this but i think the storyline was so fun just like him being the vampire and the, the things that they had to do together and, and them being roommates and everything like the storyline was just really really fun and yeah i think i'm gonna give this one three stars like it wasn't like the best book i've ever read but it also wasn't like a bad book like it was just fun book but yeah i'm very happy that i ended up reading this and again the playlist that i got with this was actually the most perfect playlist ever to read with this book like i'm just so happy that spotify made a vampire mix playlist with me like i actually may listen to this playlist a few times because it was a really good playlist i actually really enjoyed this this one honestly i don't know what i want to read next i haven't looked obviously at the mixes they've made for me if there's any different ones so i guess we'll look now these are the ones i'm thinking of there's a lot here these violent delights dead romantics red queen which i really 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 want to read this if we were villains which is like the dark academia I'd like i need to be in the mood for this because i think it's like more of a poetic poetically written book and i don't know if i want to like go into that right now but i really want to read it soon legendary which i was going to continue in my last video but i never did and now i've been thinking about it so maybe i think i'm like most 
most likely gonna choose one of these two. I don't know if I want like the fairy tale, not fairy tale, but like the carnival aspect fantasy or Red Queen because I know Lauren Roberts when she was making Powerless, one of my absolutely favorite books ever. My favorite fantasies I recently read, I can't stop thinking about it. And she took like inspiration from this as one of like the inspirations for the book. And I've been thinking about it ever since reading Powerless that I need to read this. So I feel like I wanna go with this one. I think it's a trilogy or there's four books. Oh, hold on. There's five. Am I about to put myself into another series? Like maybe, but I might want to go with this one. And I know I'm choosing this before looking at the playlist. If I can't find a playlist that I feel like corresponds well with this, because I feel like the first book in this video, the playlist kind of didn't mix well with the book and that kind of hindered the experience. So if I can't find a playlist that kind of seems like it'll go well with this, I'll choose a different book, but I haven't looked at the playlist they've made for me in the past few days. So pop, mix, country, indie, folk, rock, R&B. R&B is a new one. The other ones I think are all just the same. Again, I don't know if they changed up the music that's in it or not, but and while Luke Combs, Five Seconds Summer Taylor Swift Hosier Noah Khan. I feel like any artist was giving fantasy it would be in Hosier's playlist. If I were listening to this, I would probably read maybe Dead Romantics. I feel like that goes with this vibe. Moody mix, happy, romantic, chill. Sad pop, gentle, quiet, baking mix. Driving, alternative, dreamo, angst, crying, energy, quiet, sad. Crying mix. I don't, if I had a sad book, I would definitely pick that one. Angst mix. Why do I feel like angst mix might be the vibe for this? Yeah, because it has some songs that I see often in fantasy playlists which i feel like would be in a playlist for the red queen but it also has some like romancy type songs mixed in which i feel like could could hit i don't know i really want to read this book and now i just need to find the perfect playlist for it let's see driving bacon gentle quiet morning mix i kind of just love that just to have just to listen to on my own quiet mornings i think i would probably pick angst mix do i want to read it wait now i don't know wait now i don't know if i want to read this hold on Hold on. Okay guys, I'm back. I have no books on my TBR that are screaming my name other than this book. So I'm fingers crossed, hoping for the best for this. I just watched Rachel Catherine's video and she was reading Powerless and I saw all her reactions and just like the feeling of Powerless is crazy. And just like, I wish I could read that book for the first time again. So I'm looking for that book in every fantasy that I read now, unfortunately. Like that book has held the standard for me. So I think I'm gonna do this one with the angst playlist. I feel like that one gives the most like fantasy mixed with almost like a romance vibe. Obviously we're gonna see once I start reading it, but this is the one that I feel like is closest to this book. And I really wanna read this book. So I'm trying to find a playlist that's like the most connected and most relatable to the book I wanna read. And none of the other ones are like screaming my name. I'm most of the playlists. I will give you guys updates. We'll see how it goes. I don't know. I'll let you guys know though, probably in the morning. We'll see if I, if I get far tonight, but we're doing it. Okay, I will be back with updates. It might be afternoon, hold on. I don't know what time it is. It's 12.45, it is the afternoon. And I have read about 168 pages. I'm on chapter 15. I read a bit last night and then a bunch this morning. But as soon as I started this, I can totally see the inspiration that Lauren Roberts, like that's the first thing I was thinking about is just how she took or what she took from this storyline for her book. And I can like right off the bat see where she got the inspiration from because the story like it's giving. Not the same vibe, but like some of the same like politics stuff kind of makes sense for the Powerless book. But I didn't say what this is about. And it's basically like these two different parts parts of the world that they're in. There's the reds and the silvers. And it's basically the type of blood that they have. Like you're either reds, you have the red blood, or 
or you're silver, you have silver blood, and the silvers are like the higher ups, like the kings, the royals, and everything. They have more power, they have literally like different like magic abilities, like actual powers, and then there's the reds who are like lower, kind of work for the silvers, and they go to a war for the silvers, and they're just very underneath. So their main character, Mare, she's a red. But as the story starts and you get further into the story, you find out that she actually has some silver powers within her. She's not a silver, she's a red, but she has powers, and she finds out where the, the royals find out. Now they're in kind of a little bit of a predicament of what to do with her because it's like that's crazy. So now she's kind of with the royals and she's with the princes and stuff like that and now she's in that side of the world. And I love in fantasy books when the like the main girl gets thrown into like the royals and she has to be part of now like the higher ups and all of that. I just something about it. It's just really fun to me. So that's where I'm at right now. There's a little bit more to it and other things going on within like the political world and the storyline that I'm really enjoying. I feel like I got right into it. It was really fast paced. Very easy to read. Very easy to follow along and understand which I love. So far so good. I want to read a bunch today. Um, I have a little bit to do right now and then I'm gonna read all good things are happening right now I'm excited I'm excited to see where this goes because I heard that the ending I don't know like cliffhanger territory and I went out this morning and I actually bought the second book because of the cliffhanger is that big I do want to start the second one so yeah okay I will be back in a little and I will let you guys know how it goes once I read some more and I ended up just absolutely binging the book. It was so like fast paced, like I didn't want to stop. And I was really entertained. I was in the story. I wanted to know the ending and everything like that. So I did enjoy it, but I also was, while I was reading this, like this was published in I think 2015 or something. And I feel like this is such like a blueprint, like the way the storyline is kind of told and like the different things that are happening to like a lot of fantasies like that I've read that are published more recently. Like I know I said that Powerless, she said she took inspiration from this, but I think a lot of fantasies that I read recently maybe took inspiration from this too. Like the way that the storyline went and like what was going on, I kind of figured out as it was happening because a lot of the other fantasies I've read kind of follow along the same thing. The ending, I didn't like completely guess. It was like a thing in my head, but then I was like, wait, this is too similar. I don't know. I don't really want to say too much because it's obviously going to give too much away, but the plot twist was great. It was really good. It makes me want to go into the second one. It makes me want to read the second one. I don't know when I'll get to it. I did buy it, but I think I'm going to give this, okay, I round up to a four, but I think it's like a three and a half, four, that range, but I, I'll give it a four. It was really fun. It was so entertaining, but I did expect to have more romance in here. I think the romance scenes that we got were kind of like cut short and just like weren't like fully, I don't know, there wasn't like enough in it. But that didn't really ruin it or anything for me. Like I did enjoy the story. Like I said, it was entertaining. I was, I was enjoying the politics of it and like what was going on. I just do wish that the romance was heavier. That the little romance that we got like made more sense, honestly. Like it kind of just felt a little bit more random and I was like, is this a romance? Like is she trying to give us romance or is she not? So I am excited to see if it like progresses in the second one when I get to that. But it was fun. It was fast paced. It was just like a good little fantasy. I also never said that I switched my plan Playlist. I was gonna do the angst one but then I opened up Spotify again when I went to go play that playlist and I saw this one it like kind of switches the playlist they make for you randomly so this one came up and it was called escapism and I was like wait this kind of sounds perfect because I'm escaping into a fantasy world like hopefully this playlist has fantasy songs on it and I clicked on it and it had like the perfect songs to read during this type of fantasy like it had like majority of the fantasy songs you see in most like fantasy book playlists and it also had like just some like modern not modern songs but like more recent popular songs like mixed in there and it was honestly the perfect
perfect playlist to read in the background of this book. Like it just, some of the songs like, didn't make sense with the story, but like the vibes were there and that was just perfect. So I'm really happy that I found this playlist. That concludes our video for this week and our video for today. This was so much fun, honestly. I love finding a good playlist to read with a book. It just genuinely enhances the reading experience for me. And if you're one like me that likes to listen to music while you're reading a book, you should definitely check out the playlist that Spotify makes for it. It's really fun. I usually just search up the book on Spotify and the way that it's perfectly curated to the book that these people make is just so amazing and I just don't have the brain to come up with songs that make sense for books and stuff. I only have a playlist for Magnolia Parks because that just like the songs that go with the, that series really speaks to me. One day maybe I'll make a playlist for a book or like the vibes I think come with the book and maybe I'll play my own playlist while reading it. I just like my creativity is not there and I like once I want to make a playlist for a book I like forget every song that's ever existed like I can't do it. I don't know why just like everything that leaves my brain. This is really fun. Again I love listening to music while I'm reading a book. It just it just makes it so much better. I just love it so much. You're like in your own world and it just it's so much fun. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know if you did. Let me know if you read any of these books, any of your playlists that you have that you want me to listen to. If you have any good ones, I'll listen to them while I'm reading some books. So let me know and yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you hopefully in the next one. Bye!